it's the quietness at low speeds that's really the most eerie and amazing thing about electric vehicles. Or at least it will be. So we built a trolley for the firewall. It's probably a little over-engineered, but we had this spare 75 by 75 lying around. The reason to do it though is because we've got a lot of work to do on this area. On this side is where we've got to mount a lot of the electric vehicle components. And on the other side is of course the dashboard, which is you know, what you see as a driver, uh, which of course sounds obvious, but for us it's rethinking you know, what information we're going to show, what are the gauges we show, how does the how do all these elements work and how do we find that balance between nostalgia and ease of use, beautiful design, modern interfaces, modern tech. Um, there's a lot of thought and a lot of um, playing around and experimentation that we're going to do on this. Um, plus it also makes it easy to wheel around to the sandblaster again or move into the paint booth, something like that. Here's another vehicle we're converting. It's a Series 3 long wheelbase ute in Bahama Gold, or formerly Bahama Gold, a little faded now. It has a lot of questionable elements to it, uh, but some good ones. So a lot of things won't make it into the final build. Uh, probably this carpet, uh, this whole firewall. But it does have a good gearbox. And we've removed that and taken it along with Juniper's gearbox and another two gearboxes up to a friend Don in Yarrawonga to be rebuilt and turned into basically two awesome gearboxes for us. Uh, Don is actually one of the top questions that we get uh, on social media is, hey, do you know that guy up in Yarrawonga who's built that electric Land Rover? The answer is, yeah, we do, and he's rebuilding the gearboxes for us. I've not been the best blogger. Uh, I haven't been able to film as much of the work as I would have liked to, partly because I'm not always here. And when I'm shooting this on my phone, if I'm not here, my phone's not here. So Clive and Bronte in particular have been doing a heap of work, uh, which I'll go through, but we don't have the best footage of it. Um, so you can see the results, but not some of the mistakes we've made along the way, which are kind of the most interesting bits. Here's the results of a sandblasted, Rewelded, repaired, and painted chassis. So, you know, there's a number of bits that have been drastically replaced. That was the rear cross member. And this is the good side, actually, but you can see some big holes here. And there's a bunch of other stuff all through it. It's eaten itself out from the inside. But, you can weld on a new one. 
So it comes with these sleeves and you wrap, you cut the, you cut the old chassis off and then you can weld these sleeves over, over the existing part. We also needed to replace this rear, this kind of, uh, what is it? A rear outrigger, sort of the fuel tank hanger as well, if it's got a secondary tank. These plates you can see here where it's been welded. What they don't come with though is these body support brackets. So you've got to cut these off, weld them back on. And it's the same over here. So we replaced, you would have seen that these, all the fronts here were, were all eaten out. Um, you know, dirt and mud and water gets all caught up in here and it doesn't necessarily successfully drain that well once it gets clogged with mud. This is particularly important obviously because it's holding the suspension which means it's holding the wheels and that's a key part of a car. So you're able to buy these front sections and again cut the chassis and weld these sleeves over the top. What again they don't come with though is this is where the steering dampener connects so you have to cut this off the original chassis and place it back in. One of the critical things of course is trying to get these aligned and, and correct and, and the most important part for that is where the suspension attaches. So we had a, a brace welded across here with a rod through it so that we could align that with the original one before cutting, cut that off, place this one on, put the bolt through and re-weld it on again. Now Land Rover engineering isn't necessarily exact from the factory so hopefully that will still line up and we may have issues where we try and mount a bumper might be a little bit off. Here's some axle and brake components that have been taken to the sandblaster that we've primed. These aren't going to be white in the end, they'll all be black, but we had some white primer. Um, amazing to <laughs> see the transformation from some of these, from some of the most greasy, horrible parts in the world to something that's quite, uh, quite serviceable and still good. Some things really aren't, and that's, um, you know, you can tell a difference between the front and rear drums and you can see the the wear that the brake pads had on that and there's a there's a few mil of lip here where it's all worn away and so it might be that uh, we replace these these brake drums you can see the surface rust that comes up after sandblasting very very quickly um, just oxidizing in the air it just comes off with a little wire brush though we took our springs to the sandblaster as well and they came up amazingly you just loosen them up a bit and the sand can of course get in through all the gaps and clean them up perfectly. These are parabolic springs and what that means is that unlike traditional springs where you might see that there's just a lot of leaves and they're very stiff, they're great for heavy loads but they're not so great when there's no load. Uh, they're very, very stiff and very harsh. Parabolics kind of give you the best of both worlds. They have a little bit of flex to begin with which keeps it soft when there's no load. Um, I can do this with my hand, for example, but then when it gets heavier, they start to stiffen up. Um, so it's like almost like a dual rate, but they make the ride a lot nicer. It is a big consideration for us and something that we won't completely know until we've finished it and loaded up with batteries exactly what suspension we, we need to have and what spring rates we want. All these kind of questions uh, will come from experimentation and the fun of building multiple vehicles. This is a really exciting turning point in the project where we've gone from pulling everything apart to putting it all back together again. And so even something as simple as bolting on this bump stop is hugely satisfying because it means we're going from having racks and boxes full of stuff to a car, which is of course the goal. So the next few episodes will look at the electrical and mechanical work that's going to put this car back together again.